All right, hey guys, what's going on? This is Dave with Dave's Digs, back at you with another how-to video this week on how to make some boxes. I ran into a shipping issue this week where I sold a golf club on either Macari or Poshmark, I don't remember which, but they printed me out a UPS label of all things. So normally for golf clubs, I'm sure you already know, but if not, most people use these priority mailing tubes. They're triangle boxes. Uh, and they're free, so most people use these, but you can't use these for UPS or FedEx. So, I thought I'd do a video on how to make some boxes. So I make my own triangle boxes, like this, for golf clubs whenever I run out and don't have time to wait for USPS to deliver me some, or when I run into what I did this week with the uh, UPS label. Let me move this camera equipment outside and I'll show you how I do it. Let's get to it, guys. Okay, so you can make these boxes out of any kind of box, but for this video, we're gonna use a Home Depot box because it's a standard size of Home Depot for the extra large box, and everybody can go pick one up and start making their own boxes. Once you get used to making them, like I said, you can use any kind of box. The measurement on these boxes just works out perfect with no waste. So here I'm making marks from the outside at six and a half inches. So each measurement will be six and a half, 13, and then 19 and a half. So I'll come to the other side, same thing, six and a half, 13, and then 19 and a half. So then we're gonna repeat that down here on this end. And now just start connecting your dots. You're gonna make lines all the way down the cardboard. Then we're going to flip our board over and repeat the same process. So again, we're going to start down here with our same measurements. Six and a half, 13, and 19 and a half. Repeat all the way around the board so you can connect your lines after you're done. And once again, connect the dots. And here I'm just gonna make a straight line and cut the box in half. Bam. Now your halves are gonna unfold one more time and you'll cut them in half again. Bam. So now we are very lightly gonna score these pieces of cardboard so they will fold straight on the lines. And when I say lightly, I'm just talking about the top layer of paper on this cardboard. You're not cutting through anything else, just the very top layer of paper. And here I'm using the straight edge, the ruler to do this, but I find it to be a pain in the butt sometimes. With two people, it'd be a lot easier, but like right here at the end, it wants to move every time you get your razor blade near the end, then you get off track. So after much practice, I've learned to throw that thing away and just to learn to cut straight down the line. A little bit of practice, you can get really good and cut some really straight lines. Okay, as you can see, I make my cuts on the advertisement side of the cardboard. That way, when you're done folding your box, all you can see is the plain brown cardboard. And here, I like to make three bands of tape, one in the middle and one on each end, just like they were folding tabs on the USPS boxes. Then of course, you wanna run tape all the way down. And voila, you got a basic start to your box. 
Okay, so this is just a little three inch piece of scrap cardboard that I'm gonna use to trace for my flaps on the ends. So I just trace my line all the way around and repeat on the other end as well. Now we're going to score these flap lines just like we did the long lines before we folded the box so that the flaps will fold just like the sides did. Now we're going to cut the corners all the way down to the flap line that we just scored. We're going to do all three. And then right here we're going to cut this little double flap right here off so it's not so bulky. and then repeat on the other end. And now, bam, you can just fold your flaps down. So I fold all three of them out first, and then I start folding one at a time in so that I can see where my line is to where I can trim it. And see there, I forgot to pull that double flap off, which is why I do it beforehand most times. Makes it a lot easier. And this is a personal preference, but I like to just score the tops of this one on the last flap so that the sides fold down. And it seems to give it a little better stability in my opinion. Just fold them down and then tape over everything. But you can cut them completely off if you like. It's still gonna be a pretty sturdy box. And then just tape the end of it really well. Okay, so when I go to ship mine, I'll just grab my putter. I wrap the head and the bubble wrap. Wrap it around real good so it doesn't move around in the box and shake around. And just stuff it in the box. Should slide right in for most putters. So knowing how to make these boxes is also really nice too when you have oversized golf clubs. Instead of a six and a half inch box like we've made here, make an eight inch box or a nine inch box if you need it. But anyway, when you get your club in there, then you stuff some bubble wrap on the handle. Get it all nice and secure so it don't move around and shake. Fold your flaps and bam, tape it up good. So now you don't have to ship your clubs with just USPS. You can ship with anything you'd like. You can ship FedEx, UPS, whatever you want.